Okay, welcome to Scrappy Saturday. I'm Lisa, and I thank you for joining me. Um, as I had said in um, the last video, uh, I'm just new at this, so hopefully you will bear with me until I get this uh, worked to where it's a little bit better. But um, today I'm going to do a card that is Stamping Up Strictly. I am a Stamping Up uh, demonstrator, independent, and therefore I'm using, sometimes I use things uh, that aren't Stamping Up, but today everything is Stamping Up. Um, I, we're going to do this card today. It's a thank you card. We um, send thank you cards from our Disabilities Ministry every month for the churches that um, are so kind as to serve meals to all of our disabled that month. And so um, I wanted to get one going already for the fall. And so I did this one. It's thankful for you. Um, it comes all from this sheltering tree uh, stamp set from Stamping Up. I uh, use every bit of it, and a lot of people will show you how to use these leaves with uh, using the colored markers and coloring it in, and I didn't have all the markers that uh, come with the stamping up, and so I came up with a way to use it with my stamp pad, so I want to show you that a little bit too right now. Um, I started with this uh, cardstock. This is your Tip Top Taupe. It is cut at uh, four and a quarter by 11 and then folded at five and a half. And then this is your um, watermelon wonder paper. It is cut at four and a quarter, I'm, I'm sorry, four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then your whisper white is cut at four by five and a quarter. So I'm going to start right now. I've already put some uh, some of my stamps on blocks and so I'm going to start right now by stamping the tree. Uh, the, the trunk and the branches. Um, I have found it easier for me just to turn it over and stamp it like this and then when I get a blob right here I can see it and I can wipe it off. <laughs> before I stamp. And I go up a little bit, and by the way, I use a piece of colored paper normally under when I'm making a card, simply because it is easier to see where I'm, when I'm at the edge and where I'm at than if I have it on white background. And I think that looks about right, so let's stamp the tree. Now, I stamped it up a little bit further than probably I would have if I was making this uh, down farther at the baseline. There we go. Perfect. Okay. But, um, but I'm doing that so that I can do all the leaves and everything around it. Okay. Now, I'm going to take this off. And as I said, I have had a problem trying to... Um, to do all the colored leaves because I'm like I don't have all those markers. So what I have what I have figured out that I can do is I can start and, and this is watermelon wonder and then I'm using uh, Tangelo Twist which is kind of a an orangey color and then I'm using uh, Hello Honey for my golden colors and um, I'm going to take them. I've got to put this one on now since I took that off. But I'm going to take those and kind of dot them around on here in different places. And you can do this upside down. I'm just doing kind of here and there and uh, just in and out a little bit. And I, I know it's probably not the best way, but it works. So, since I don't have the markers, you do what works. And then, I'm doing just a little bit of this around and kind of going in with it on various places. And I just keep going until I get it filled up. And, 
it turns out okay once you get it uh, once you get everything filled up and then I'm just going back and kind of making sure that everything has got some ink on it then I'm going to take this and come down just as close to the center as I can working this and stamp now I've left enough at the top so that I can put my sentiment up there but I do try to stamp this on pretty good so that I can and you can see through the uh, block that it's got some color variation there and it does come out looking like just regular uh, uh, fall leaves on the tree there Work for, works for me so it's a way to keep from having to have a whole lot of different markers to do that okay now I've got that done I want to I'm going to put this up but I will use them again in just a minute um, because I'm also going to add brown sugar and because of, there are some leaves that you can take and just kind of fill in but I want to get every, my grass and everything in before I do that and with the grass markings on this one I've used a couple of different kinds I was just about to have hello honey all over me so um, I am taking some I want to do my swing set first and it's uh, I've already got it on right here and I'm using my early espresso with it as well and I know it could have worked well to have been done uh, before I put the leaves but I like to kind of see where the leaves are so you could do it either way there's my swing and I'm going to try to get it right in here so that it hits the branches and I'm just pushing it down and trying not to rock it I'm just holding it for a few seconds and there's my swing next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, grass here I use this part of the grass on this uh, stamping thing this stamp set that's all with the early espresso but I'm going to take this and I'm starting off with doing the mossy meadow it's a little bit darker and then I'm going to follow up with the old olive but mossy meadow is a little bit darker so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start trying to just kind of do a little bit of it onto one side and I'm trying to get the trunk in with this one so that it will cover it up and just make it look like that the, there's grass all around it okay now I'm going to use do that one more time and I'm going to kind of do it over to the other side somewhat got some of the darker and now I'm just going to use the same thing and I'm coming back with the old olive I'm going to try to pull some of that in here too I like this because it doesn't have to be exact and on the other one I think I stamped off and then I stamped that on but I'm actually thinking that this time I want to put it on there without stamping off and then stamping on. Okay, and now I've got my variation in the grass colors as well. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
come back with and fix my leaves, my extra leaves. Now there is one of these, which is some, um, I think I put the paper to the side, now I can't find it. Um, there is one, there it is, I'm sorry. Um, well, there it is. This right here, I'm taking those same leaves, colors that I used there, I'm putting this on, plus I'm going to bring out my baked brown sugar, and I am going to just, just dab a little bit of this in the tree back up here in places where maybe it looks like I could add some brown to also give a little more color into my leaf area because you know you've always got some brown in those colored leaves and I would like to keep them in there oh, and I just did a booby there but we'll fix it something will fix it if it's a kite flying in the sky so be it but anyway um, that's the one thing about making your own cards you don't have uh, anything that you have to specifically go by. You can just, and if you have a, make a mistake, you'll find something that can, you can put over it to correct it. Okay, I think that's pretty good. But now what I've got to do is I've got to come back and put some leaves on the ground because the leaves have fallen and um, we're gonna come back with a rake. Actually, the rake was where it was because leaves had fallen. Uh, because the last time I made a, I made a boo-boo on that one and so I came back and put the rake where I did to cover that. That's what I'm gonna do right here. I'm just giving some extra leaves in there. And um, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to close up my baked brown sugar and I'm going to come back with some of my other colors now and cover the ground with this pile of leaves. Um, I'm not even cleaning it, I'm just coming back and doing it with this other one and we can always make the pile. We're going to always keep on adding more. can see it through here a little bit more just on the ground I'm going to do that one just so I can even that out just a bit I keep hitting this block on the ink pad and that's what's giving me making my boo-boos here and I'm going to get rid of that so anyway um, try to clean that off a little bit better now I am going to pile up my leaves a little bit to put my rake on it, so therefore I'm adding just a little bit more of that there. Next, I'm going to come back in here with my golds. And here again, just going to start putting those in. I don't know why I keep hitting that, but I do. So, all right. All right, let's get a little bit more of that in here. So that, and up against the tree here, I don't know why. I can't seem to get that one filled in. All right. And now for the final one, the Tangelo Twist. You can do this in any order that you want to. And uh, then... I'm going to start just throwing this in here as much as I can. And 
fitting it in here so I can make my pile to put my rake up against. Trying to get it all over the ground. You cannot see it real well, but you can still see that it's dotted there. So we want to make sure that we have it, that we have plenty of stuff here. All right. Here we go. Now, I have one of these. I don't have one of the cleaners, the stamp cleaners yet that they have, but I love the baby wipes, so I'm just using baby wipes for right now because I've got that in this microfiber cloth, which does a great job of cleaning and drying. So I'll put these back up as soon as I get through. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rake out and let me see. It's probably on the one over there and I think it is. Um, not that one. Here it is. Um, I hope. There it is. Having so many stamps that you use, it makes it more difficult. I said I was through with Early Espresso, but I'm not. I use my I use that for my rake as well. But I liked having it leaning there. And as I said before, I had made a really big boo boo with its long streak and that rake coming there hanging there was so helpful. So I'm gonna come in and put it right there like it's leaning on that pile of leaves again. There we go. Now I hope that's finished. And then I want to go ahead and cover up that place where I made this little boo-boo up here. And the way I'm going to do it is I am going to take a kite because we have a kite here with this particular one. And so I'm just going to say that this kite is just flying. That one's Oh, wait a minute. That one's not it. Let me find it. I say that, but I'm not sure that I have the right one that has the kite. Excuse me. I think I misspoke. Um, but anyway, all I need to do is I can just make flying leaves, I guess, is what I'll do. I thought we had a kite, but we don't. And so I'll just take my leaves and, and make some more leaves up there, just like they're supposed to be there. Oh, this is the wrong, yeah, this is right, Tangelo Twist, okay. And I'm just going to cover that up. And we can just have some flying leaves up there. It's not going to make that big of a difference in the whole scheme of things. And I'll just put some gold up there with it too. Not exactly what I planned, but it works. Alright. Now I'm going back to fix my cinnamon up here. And I am going to use this one. Instead of using the uh, thankful for you this time, I'm going to use um, I it might help if I check this out with this written behind it. I'm going to use the uh, You Warm My Heart. That's what I'll do this time. And I'm going to emboss that with my Early Espresso embossing powder. In order to do that, we are going to take the Versamark. I like it when I can have all these things on the block before I can begin, but because there were so many, we just couldn't do it. All right, 
trying to get this at a angle where I know I can get it on there fairly straight. Okay, I'm sure I've got it good. Before I do that, however, I'm going to take my embossing pal and I am going to emboss this right here. I'm going to rub this really good right here so that my embossing powder will stick on everything. And there we go. I'm trying to get this as straight as I can right here. That looks pretty good. Okay. And now I have my Ellie Espresso embossing powder. I haven't used enough of it to really have enough to scoop up, so I'm just going to do this for this time. This one's a little bit, um, I've got a little boo-boo there, but what I do is, like I said, there's one thing about it. When you're making it yourself, you can come back and you can fix things, and sometimes it helps me for other people to uh, go back and fix things as well so I can see I'm not the only one that makes mistakes. So, uh, and with me, you'll probably see quite a few. So here I am, I'm going to come back in here and just do some right here. And there we go. After I've got this all finished, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it on my uh, Watermelon Wonder. So I've got a lot of embossing powder I think there and I am still however using my Tombow stamp uh, runner because I just love the this Tombow glue runner is really working great for me and then I'm going to center it on there So, I have already put this back in here so that I can put my cinnamon on it. And so then all I have to do is I put this on the front. And this one is finished. Doesn't take a terribly long time to do this if you don't make as many errors as I did, but it's got tons of fall leaves on it. More than I had anticipated, but it took care of my problems, didn't it? Great thing about fixing your own cards. I hope that you can do this. Maybe you won't make as many goofs as I did, and uh, I think that you will have some really great stamping. If you saw this video and you like it then just how about doing a like and um, it would be great to hear from you if you've got ideas that you think could help me more please I'm I'm all for it you just uh, you just send those to me and I appreciate your watching see you next Saturday for another scrappy Saturday